Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you had a good holiday. I'm recording this before I go on holiday. Um, I thought it was time for a Q&A. If you're new here, I did another Q&A um, a while ago, so video number 17 is also a video like this where I'm mostly just answering questions. And then there's video number five where I'm talking about the buying process and looking for something, or well, looking for this place in 2021. Wow, it's sunny here. I might walk around a little bit. All right, questions. I'm gonna move in the cabin when the cabin's finished. Um, there's a lot to do still. Um, but a lot of people think like, why is he not moving in the cabin? Because the roof is finished and the roof is finished. There's a few things to do on the gutters. But I mean, the walls are still open, you know, so. Um, that's the first thing I would want to do if I could search for stones, but because there's so much snow now, it's impossible to do. And also working with mortar is something you want to do when it's a little bit warmer. So, and you know, foundation work, building, plumbing, a lot of digging going on, building flooring, electricity, finishing inside. And if I'm going to move in the cabin, I cannot work on it because I'll be in the way. So when that will be, I mean, hopefully before the next winter, uh, and I'll probably make that, but um, it's a slow process because, you know, everything is, a lot of things is just handmade and made by myself. Like a, the gutters, for example, are a good example. You know, I thought I was going to take two weeks or three weeks to make them, but it takes, it's taken much longer because it's just a lot of work. Uh, it's all bespoke and handmade and therefore it's also special and it means something to me. So I think for the interior, it's going to be a similar approach, you know, where I don't buy just the sim the standard things, uh, you know, so hopefully um, autumn next year I'll be finished with the cabin. Well, let's see how it goes. It's, good. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I have a lot of experience with outdoor travel and with my bicycle journey, so clothing is important. The secret is good thermo clothing. So I have two layers here. This is merino wool and I have this top to bottom. I have two sets and I wear it 24-7, uh, also for sleeping. Um, it's very important, that first layer that keeps you warm. Um, but with, when you're working here, it's not that much of a challenge to stay warm, even if it's freezing. If you're doing physical work and working, uh, walking up and down the hill, um, you stay warm quite easily. And it's, it's the same with hiking and bicycle travel, you know, because you use your body so you stay warm. Um, it's more important when it's raining or snowing that you have a good outer layer that to keep the weather out. At night it's a bit different. So the tent is, I mean for a lot of people they think like how could you live in a tent in winter? It's a single layer but with a wood stove and the second stove I have a kerosene stove as well. Um, it's quite easy to, to keep it warm, um, really quite toasty so I'm, in the evenings I'm comfortable. I only have the stove on from say 6, 7 and of the afternoon until midnight when I go to bed. So after that it, the, the temperature just drops fairly quickly but um, I sleep in a down sleeping bag and that is a huge help because you've maybe seen in the videos it's just a normal bed with normal blankets. Uh, I sleep under that as well, but in a down sleeping bag, which is rated for, what is it, minus five, um, the middle temperature, there's also, for sleeping bag rating, there's also always free temperatures, but you want to look for the middle one, not the extreme, because I think that's sort of a useless number. So, because when you sleep in a normal bed, in minus temperatures. It doesn't really matter how many blankets you have because cotton and linen are just very uncomfortable when it's cold because because of the moisture from your breath it gets wet and it doesn't dry up. 
So I've done that as well in the past when I did like fan lifing long time ago that I just threw a mattress in the back of my fan and just a lot of blankets. But when you're sleeping, when you're on your pillow, that little place warms up. But when you turn around, the other side of the pillow is like freezing. So you'd wake up from that. It's very com uncomfortable. And a down sleeping bag is orthin synthetic. It doesn't have to be down, but it has to be high quality. Also the fabrics. It transmits all your body heat through the entire sleeping bag and it has a hoodie. That's important too, to have a hoodie. So um, at night I'm quite toasty. It's, it's, it's all not that bad. It's actually quite comfortable. The moments of getting out of bed are just cold, you know, because when I get out of bed, it's like last week, it was sometimes minus six, minus seven degrees Celsius in the tent. And then just have to pull on my clothes quickly. You just have to go through that moment, go for a walk, get the blood flowing, and then I'm good. And then the sun comes up and it's all fine. And the same goes for if I, the transition from working day to evening. When I'm working, I'm staying warm. So at the end of my working day, I heat up the stove before I go in the tent. So when I'm just tapering off and going inside, it's already warm. So I have to plan it a little bit. So, but so far, so good. And um, shoes, of course, are also important. These are very bad shoes for the snow because they're very slippery. These are red wings and these are you know the design is a hundred years old or more so this it's just not a it's not modern technology you know which we have like soles that are made for snow for example my snow boots or my hiking boots where I'm wearing most of the time uh, they're much better for this kind of weather how much time takes filming it's it's kind of hard to say because it, it became my second nature you know so I have one camera and one drone I want to have a very simple setup on a tripod and it's just coming with me all the time and it's and it's filming most of the time um, it takes a little bit more time when I want to show different angles but um, it's not a burden it's like I'm saying it's like I'm, I've been doing it for so long so it's it's kind of normal editing I usually do on Saturday I make and add it in one go and then on Sunday morning I watch it fine-tune it render it and then I upload it and that's then there's some work to do with making subtitles and just getting it on YouTube so yeah I would say it takes a full day to make a video uh, spread on two days on Saturday and Sunday no not really i mean not at all i would say the more people that would say like with a project like this oh no it's too much for you too much to do with, on your own the more i would be driven to just pull it off and go for it and it's the same with the bicycle journeys you know they're almost like projects that are that tend to be too big i mean that's what the interesting part of it is you know could you just jump on a bicycle and cycle to Singapore or from Vancouver to Patagonia or you know it it sounds too big and that's the interesting part of it so that's what drives me and that's you know with all of these projects if you just keep chewing you'll you'll get there so the answer is no I think it does the storytelling is important to me and that's with my other projects the same way with my bicycle journeys it was about photography and more writing and now it's videos um, but it drives me to keep going and it drives me it, it goes really both ways because sometimes people were asking with my bike journey do you do it for the photos or the story or do you do it for yourself well I, I obviously do it for myself but because I share it, it needs to be, I, I'm trying to live in the best life here. I'm trying to build, to build the nicest things. I wanna, I wanna make this successful 
for myself and because everyone is watching there's a healthy pressure which is helpful for me so this will be a dedicated garden area because it has the best sun exposure uh, for the coming year it will be still quite minimal because I'm focusing on the on the renovation for most of my time but I want to have things growing here long-term goal this will be a fenced off area there will be more beds uh, pots there will be a nice greenhouse just right over here on the slope and there will be a pond just behind the trailer there's a little dip there in the landscape where a lot of water is drained there actually because when there's a big shower you can see always a water stream coming down the driveway here and it ends up in that little dip which is already an almost a natural pond so I think that it would be nice to have a pond which is own life in it and it could use the water for the garden you know. There's going to be a masonry stove, and that's the main heating source, but there will be also complementary uh, floor heating. And that's because it's a stone house, which is kind of difficult to heat. Um, I think floor heating will make it a comfortable space. Um, the walls are not insulated, but they are 50 centimeters thick and built with clay and stones so I think that ha that might have an insulating factor I don't know but I think if you have floor heating it will go up and I think it will make it an, uh, a pleasant space to be in the floor heating I'm looking into it to have it heated by the masonry stove that could I could build something like that but I have to look into that, how that has to be done with plumbing and air pressure, etc. It's, it's a little complicated. But it could also be sourced by uh, gas, I believe. And then the warm water, I think there will be two systems. There will be a gas system for winter and then an electric boiler for summer because I have so much electricity going on in summer basically from April to September there's a lot of sun here and I can have my warm water from the solar panels but in winter that will be too much so the masonry stove is going to be here in this corner it will be quite a big thing the floor will be open about until here the entire floor because there will be a stairs going up here and then the chimney will go underneath the wall and they'll go up alongside the wall on the outside and that's also the reason why I didn't have to worry about it when building the roof because it's on the outside of the roof um, and then with underfloor heating all of the utility is going to be in that little cabin on the outside um, let me show you I think this was the doghouse because as you can see it is a very low entrance um, and it could be nice for a utility room you know if I make this bigger I have to rebuild this because it's um, it's not in good shape so it's a terrace to sit on you know it could be a little sitting area for this cabin and then inside here there could be the boilers and heating and plumbing and some electricity things you know and it could also will also be a heated space so the water installation um, and all the taps for going to the other cabin and to the garden area is nicely protected here temperature wise
can see the tracks of the chamois, the goats. Exactly the same as I always come here. You can see they walked here, they jumped off there. They enjoyed the view for a bit. And then they went back. There's a couple here. I see them sometimes. So this is the south side. And you can see there's a lot less snow here because it melts much quicker in the sun. And Johanna's garden is further down on the road. And it is better for gardening to be on the south side because it's just warmer and there's more sun hours in winter. I'm not sure in summer, it might be different then. Um, but it's such a different situation, you know, it's, uh, it's comparing apples with pears. Because here you're on the steep side, it's more sort of enclosed and small, the living space is smaller. The hill on my side is much more shallow, so it's more open, you have more space. The view is just amazing on that side. And it's beautiful here too, but it's just different, it's just different. You know, it's apples and pears, and uh, um, I would say be careful to judge if the south side is always better than the north side, as is common. Uh, as people think, like it's always the north side is not a good place to live, but I think my place is actually quite good to live. It's dark now in December. There's little sun hours, but you know what I like about it is that the sun. You have it in the back, so it doesn't blind you when you look into the view. The view is always very beautifully lit. And here in the morning you have, like now it's afternoon, it's already, it's almost free. So you have the sun in your face and you have to squint all the time. So it's, it's, it's difficult to compare. Um, but sometimes I have lunch in, in Johanna's place and it's always like very nice and warm there. In summer it can be very hot. But we always call this, this is the south of Italy, and that's the north of Italy. I'm happy in the north. Yeah, this is a nice question, isn't it? It's the most liked question on the, on the YouTube post, and it makes you daydreaming. Um, the goal is today, though, I say that very often, the goal is to live in the moment. But there is a goal also for, I mean, when will I feel that it's finished, is having the two cabins finished. Chicken coop with some chicken running around so I have my own axe, the garden finished so I can have a greenhouse and have most of my, I can grow most of my own food, a little pond, the sitting area will be more finished, there will be an outdoor kitchen again with a pizza oven. And then I could imagine the last video, I will invite people to come over for dinner. We have a long table with white sheets on the viewpoint, with food from the garden. And um, yeah, then I can look back and, and say I've reached the goal. And that will be a nice, nice last video, right? I mean, everything will end at some point. There will be a first video and the last video in the far future. but. It will at some point be all finished.